Hi guys. It is still a gray, gloomy, depressing day here in the end times in the muddy hellhole of Garfield, Texas here on Thursday afternoon, October 25th, 2018. But it is finally for the first time this week I can actually walk out of the house Looks like my muddy-ass garden has survived. We will check in with the garden tomorrow when it's supposed to be beautiful again, but since it is Thursday, I know that I'm supposed to be doing my depressed collapsitarian wine today, guys, but I'm just too depressed to do a depressed collapsitarian wine. I might get around to it. So since I couldn't work up the energy to whine about uh, how I don't have any energy to whine, uh, I decided to go on the pages of the mainstream media to bring you today's climate change meltdown roundup rant. There is just one problem. There is not one mention of climate change, global warming, Arctic ice melt, anything anywhere on Yahoo News today, including the science page as well. I mean, there are some old stories that have just been laying around for a week or so that I've already covered, but not one new story today has been added anywhere on Yahoo News. So that was an easy roundup. So I said, well, since the mainstream media has decided that perhaps the number one existential threat to humanity and the planet is not worth a mention uh, anywhere on the mainstream media, maybe there's some other uh, some other Doomer headlines about how we're so fucked that have nothing to do with uh, climate change and global warming. So uh, this is what Yahoo News came up with. Just uh, a wide variety of flotsam and jetsam uh, Doomer headlines for October 25th, 2018. And of course, we're going to start... Uh, I can find my right old man glasses right on the border between our very own shithole country and the shithole country of Mexico where this is, I think this might be the number one story on the planet. Mattis expected to send hundreds of troops to the border. All right, we're calling out the troops to the U.S.-Mexico border. Hmm. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis is expected to sign an order as early as Thursday sending 800 or more troops to the southern border to support the border patrol. Mattis is responding to a, a request from President Donald Trump <clears throat> who says he's, quote, bringing out the military to address what he is calling <clears throat> a national emergency at the Mexican border. Yes, the additional troops are to provide what one official described as logistical support to the border patrol. <clears throat> and then at the very bottom, they just add kind of as an afterthought. There are already about 2,000 National Guard troops assisting at the border under a previous Pentagon arrangement. <clears throat> there you go. I'm, I'm sure the people in Panama City, Florida would love to uh, get the same level of attention paid to them as, as this raggle-taggle bunch of uh, poor people from Honduras are getting Donald Trump's attention. I'm sure they would, uh, they would love to trade place, places with that caravan down there in the Florida panhandle. But let's go from the border of our own shithole country uh, to, well, I guess this could end up being the entire planet. Uh, the 
<clears throat> Yahoo News calling this Cold War II. Cold War II, which is very well another name for World War III. Uh, semantics. Trump threat to pull out of INF Treaty could set off a new arms race. No shit, Sherlock. When the history of the post-Cold War era is finally written, chronicling the return to Cold War-style animosity and antagonism between Russia and the U.S., this week's apparent decision by the Trump administration to withdraw from the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty may prove a fateful turning point. Yes, uh, both sides can cite a long record of grievances. For Russia, the turning points in the relationship included the Balkan Wars of the 1990s when NATO sided against the Russian ally Serbia, the steady expansion of Western military alliances eastward, and efforts to promote, efforts to promote democracy. Oh, come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. That uh, Moscow perceived as meddling uh, in its affairs, and, of course, the West was provoked by Russia's return to authoritarianism, its meddling in U.S. and European elections, and, above all, the rewriting of international borders by military force in Georgia, Crimea, and eastern Ukraine. Uh, anyway... We shall see what the next chapter looks like. I get is the bromance over between these two guys. I've I've never ever been able to figure out the real uh, relationship between Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin, uh, other than they're both uh, spawns of Satan. Uh, no shit, Sherlock. You, you, you know anybody. Uh, I, I, anybody who despises Donald Trump and acts like Vladimir Putin is is no worse or any better than Donald Trump. It, we're, 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 it, no matter which way you look at this story, we are fucked. Okay, I want to thank Sister Sandy to uh, sending me this story literally, literally, from our own shithole country. I, I, anybody uh, acting like that the United States of America, particularly more and more our national parks, that the United States is not a shithole country, uh, let Vice explain this to you. America's national parks are being ruined by human poop, how number two has become problem number one in some of our most beautiful public lands. And, uh, you know, guys, I have had several, uh, I have had several uh, videos about this when I myself have been out there uh, hiking and camping on our public lands, uh, it, 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 you know, just, it, it, there is no better example uh, of a clueless fucking moron than these, I, 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 won't, I won't even call it hundreds or thousands, it's millions, millions of clueless fucking morons who just go out there and, 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 and shit. Wherever it falls is where it falls. Yeah, you know, it, this is a long, involved article uh, talking about how how most people won't even dig a fucking hole to shit in. It's not even a shit hole country. It's just a shit country. We are literally covering uh, our national parks and recreation areas with human shit and toilet paper. 
Uh, anyway, I think we've been over that story. Uh, okay, let's let's just start. Let's leave our own shit smeared, our own shit smeared country, and take a and take a tour around the shithole planet. Starting, let's start over there in the shithole country of Malaysia. Swamped with plastic waste, Malaysia struggles as global scrap piles up. Yes, hundreds of sacks filled with plastic waste from the United States, Britain, South Korea, and Spain spill onto the streets of an industrial zone in Pulau Inda, an island town just an hour's drive from Kuala Lumpur and home to Malaysia's biggest port. The stench of burning plastic and fumes from near by from nearly a dozen recycling a dozen recycling factories. Warning, warning, bullshit alert wafts through the neighborhood even as more container loads of plastic garbage are unloaded. Pulau Inda, ironically the name means beautiful island, is one of many towns in Malaysia where illegal plastic recycling factories have popped up in recent months as the South, as <clears throat> the South East Asian nation has become the top choice for plastic waste exporters from all around the world. The trigger for this dumping deluge was a Chinese ban on waste imports from the beginning of this year, which disrupted the flow of more than 7 million tons of plastic scrap each year. So Malaysia quickly became the leading alternative garbage destination, importing nearly half a million tons of plastic waste between January and July uh, from just its top 10 source countries. And now dozens of factories have opened up in, in Malaysia to handle that garbage many without an operating license using low-end technology and environmentally harmful methods of disposal. Quoting Yo Bi Yin's Malaysia Minister of, of Everything, quote, the situation is getting worse, especially with more and more illegal plastic recycling factories. No shit, Sherlock. Yep. Okay, we're just going to stay over there in Asia. What's going on with our fellow Earthling, the tiger? What are you doing turning your back to the camera? Don't be so rude. <clears throat> Tigers dwindling. Tigers dwindling. Just six subspecies remain. Six different subspecies of tiger still exist today, scientists confirmed Thursday amid, amid hopes that the new findings will boost efforts to save the fewer than 4,000 free-range cats that remain in the world. Uh, three other tiger species have already been blasted into uh, oblivion. The Caspian tiger, the Javan tiger, and the Bali tiger. And you can believe that all of the rest of them, with the possible exception of the Bengal tiger, uh, are right behind them. <clears throat> If uh, you're not aware of this, the threats to tigers' survival include habitat loss and poaching. 
No shit, Sherlock. So we have fewer than 4,000 tigers left on planet Earth spread over six. Yeah, by, it, it didn't break it down, but my guess is of the 4,000, that over half of them are Bengal tigers, you know, the main tiger you think about, and uh, the other five little remnant populations are make up the rest. Okay, I want to thank Brother Alm for sending me this story this morning. Let's go over to the shithole country of Australia. How are things looking in Australia as the summer wildfire season uh, starts to ramp up in Australia? <clears throat> Ecosystems across Australia are collapsing under climate change. No shit, Sherlock. Oh, well, I guess I did have a story about climate change. It wasn't, it, it wasn't from Yahoo News, of course. You will never, you will nowhere on Yahoo News find any mention of ecosystems collapsing all over the continent of Australia. Uh, okay, so this is a paper from uh, the University of Tasmania. Uh... Okay. To the chagrin of the tourist industry, the Great Barrier Reef has become a notorious victim of climate change, but it is not the only Australian ecosystem on the brink of collapse. Our research, published in Nature Climate Change, describes a series of sudden and catastrophic ecosystem shifts that have occurred recently across Australia. These changes caused by the combined stresses of gradual climate change and extreme weather events are overwhelming ecosystems' natural resilience. There you go. Um, many of these th these regions are iconic su are iconic, sustaining tourism and outdoor activities and providing valuable ecological services. Um, blah blah blah, and pretty much every one of them is is is, is fucked. Uh, as climate change causing environmental changes. These changes are often abrupt and potentially irreversible. They include wildlife and plant population collapses, the local extinction of native species, the loss of ancient highly diverse ecosystems, and the creation of precarious, of previously unseen ecological communities invaded by new plants and animals. Uh, anyway, guys, I think it's safe to say uh, that Australia is fucked. Uh, anyone, uh, there you go. I think it's safe to say Australia's fucked. Alright, moving on to the shithole country of Belgium, of all places, <clears throat> where, no shit, Sherlock, endangered fin whale washes up dead on Belgian beach. No shit, Sherlock. A 60-foot-long fin whale washed up last night on a Belgian beach after dying offshore in what the Royal Belgian Institute of Natural Science is called a rare event. So, uh, I guess they're starting the autopsy on the 35-ton male whale and uh, waiting to see 
what uh, that reveals. My guess is it's going to be one of the usual suspects killing the whales. So the last time a dead fin whale washed up was in 2015. And that whale was found on the stern of a Brazilian ship carrying a cargo of orange juice to Europe. Presumably, the whale had been hit by the ship a couple of days before and dragged along into the port. No shit, Sherlock. All right, tigers, whales. Uh, now let's go to uh, the bottom of the shithole world and look at the race to save to save the Antarctic's penguins, whales, and seals. And what this story is is talking about. Uh, is, well, there's certainly a, a climate change angle in this story, I guess. So, I, I guess you can say Yahoo News had a climate change story. So, what they're talking about now is, is whether to open up the Weddell Sea. I guess that's how you pronounce it, this, this sea down there in the Antarctic Ocean, which is home to all of these penguins and, and whales and seals whether they are going to open it up to commercial fishing that uh, it's the only reason it's not open to commercial fishing is uh, because today it's covered with ice but they're just anyone with a brain realizes that it's not going to be long that the Antarctic Ocean follows the Arctic Ocean and and all of the Antarctic ice is going to melt and so they, so the fishermen, these industrial fishermen, are already biting at the bit to get their fishing nets in there uh, as soon as the ice melts. And uh, you know, guys, it, it, it's it, this is this all one of these. Is this a, another frying pan or the fire story or just another basic we are so fuck story? But I just li I especially like the opening, the opening giving a little bit of historical perspective to what usually happens when humans uh, or the last time uh, that humans first invaded the Weddell Sea. The first humans to reach Antarctica's Weddell Sea did not come in the name of exploration. They came in 1823 to kill seals, lots of seals. Colonies of these marine mammals had already been wiped out across much of the southern hemisphere, you know, before 1823. Captain James Weddell a British sealer himself, after whom the Southerly Ocean would be named, thought they could find more seals if they pushed further south than any human had ever done before. Hmm. Fast forward 195 years and, US, and representatives of the U.S along with 23 other countries in the European Union are attending a meeting this week uh, to figure out the future of the Weddell Sea. There you go. Uh, which is now hugely at risk. Climate change threatens its ecosystems and is melting the ice, making the sea much more accessible to commercial fish fishing, which could further imperil this pristine wilderness. No shit, Sherlock. All right, what's next? Okay, let's go over to the shithole country of Nigeria. Good God, uh, anybody wanting to see what the end times looks like. So anyway, 
Africa's richest man is on the case. Africa's richest man is on the case to pull Nigeria out of spiraling, out of control poverty. And take a wild guess how Nigeria, looking towards the future, plans to pull its country out of poverty. Hmm. This is a real brain teaser. With hundreds of multi-huge cranes and stacked shipping containers, the construction site rises from the swamps east of Lagos like a technicolor hallucination. This is Nigeria's latest hope for transforming its stagnant economy, a ten and a half billion dollar oil refinery. That will be Africa's biggest oil refinery, able to produce 650,000 barrels a day. When the pumps roared alive in 2020, they could make Nigeria a net importer of fuel despite copious crude oil reserves self-sufficient in petroleum products. But that is only the beginning. Once the oil refinery is operational, industry analysts say Nigeria could become Africa's biggest producer of refined petroleum and gas products, ranging from plastics to fertilizer, as well as jet fuel, diesel fuel, and gasoline. That would create a variety of new industries, potentially lifting the economy out of the, the economy of the entire region for decades to come. Yeah, so this is how Nigeria is responding to the new IPCC report saying we have 12 years to uh, wean ourselves off of fossil fuels, which of course is, in itself is... Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's but uh, e even if you suspend uh, uh, belief to believe for one minute uh, that we have 12 minutes, much less 12 years to wean ourselves off fossil fuels, this is just one more example of how this planet I I is responding to uh, the threat uh, of fossil fuels to the planet. It is the economy, stupid. If, if the choice is the Nigerian economy, which is another way of saying this, this fucking billionaire putting more money in his and his billionaire buddy's pockets, uh, but if it's between lining the pockets of billionaires and their buddies or uh, destroying all life on planet Earth, Obviously, the choice is going to be made from the United States to Brazil to China to Nigeria to line the pockets of billionaires. All right. Here in our own shit, shit all country, no shit, Sherlock. The latest... Monsanto weed killer legal battle to last years. No shit, Sherlock. With the value of its stock dropping and more lawsuits expected, Monsanto's parent company, which is Bayer, uh, but I mean, you know, I'm glad to see this. I, I know there is no such thing as Monsanto anymore. But if, but if the mainstream media doesn't still use the word Monsanto and says Bayer, people are thinking they're talking about fucking aspirin and, and not talking about uh, about glyphosate. 
Anyway, with the value of its stock dropping and lawsuits and more lawsuits, yeah, like 5,000 more lawsuits expected, Monsanto's parent company, Bayer, says it will press on with its nationwide legal defense of its best-selling weed killer, Roundup. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Oh, as many as 8,000 uh, pending lawsuits. Yep, yep, yep. The legal battle will take years. All right, of course, you, you know, the, the number one story uh, on the planet, uh, I guess, uh, today is... is uh, these these pipe bombs that are being sent to all of these people who, who have gotten them is Obama gotten one and Hillary gotten one and even Robert De Niro I think has gotten one uh, and so while all of these pipe bombs were being mailed all over the country who do you think uh, Donald Trump is blaming uh, these pipe bombs on, it would be the media. It is the media. And I absolutely love this quote from the hate monger, uh, country divider, uh, clueless moron, hypocrite in chief. Take it away, Donald, and, uh, and, and tell us more about this. Quote, as part of a larger national effort to bridge our divides and bring people together, the media, the media has a responsibility to set a civil tone and to stop the endless hostility and constant negative and oftentimes false attacks and stories. <laughs> Donald Trump uh, calling out uh, calling out the media for endless host for uh, not setting a civil tone and calling out the media for endless hostility and constant, negative and oftentimes false attacks. If anyone should know about that, uh, that would be Donald Trump. And so what Time Magazine has done today has taken that, this whole story, there, there's a whole series of articles in Time uh, Magazine uh, from different writers these essays all about this whole subject of, of uncivility and divisiveness and how we have just become a, 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 a nation of frothing at the mouth, uh, you, you know, just, just always on the attack, uh, that absolutely nothing positive is being discussed. And I like this one. Uh, here's just one of many, which I'm not really gonna gonna get into. Why anger? Why anger is a wasted emotion. That was bullshit. No, Time Magazine anger is probably one of the few emotions uh, that that keep people from from having strokes and heart attacks. It is a release valve. And, uh, you know, guys, and it, it doesn't make any fucking difference anymore. Uh, you, you know, nice guys finish last is the, flip side of, is the flip side of this. It makes no fucking difference uh, if, if we're civil to each other, or we just go down uh, screaming and fighting, and uh, with all of these little backbiting, pissing matches from right here in the Doomosphere, with names we don't need to mention, all the way up to uh, you know Trump versus Putin, and and and, and uh, 
everywhere in between, it makes no fucking difference whether you want to be civil or uncivil. We're fucked. Uh, anger has nothing to do about it. I do not believe it for the first time since Sunday. For the first time since Sunday, I have the sun in my eyes. All right. Well, I thought I had three more. Oh, yeah. I... Uh, I just love it whenever I, whenever they come up with a new story on Pompeii. New Pompeii dig finds intact skeletons of two women and three children huddled together in their living room. Uh, you know, there, there is no more perfect example of history repeating itself with clueless fucking morons ignoring the warning signs. Uh, you know, this, I just refuse to believe that, that all of these people in, in Pompeii, Italy in the year, 70, year 79 AD were, were, were like really surprised when this fucking volcano went off in their backyard and buried them under 10 feet of ash. Uh, obviously, the, 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 this volcano had been rumbling for years, uh, but they just chose to ignore it, you know? And, and, and it's just such a perfect metaphor. You know, there was that story from Nigeria. The, uh, I think the latest IPCC report is just one more rumbling uh, of Pompeii Volcano and, and how does the richest man in Africa respond to it? He builds a ten and a half billion dollar oil refinery. And then when this whole fucking thing blows, he and his little billionaire buddies are going to be cowering down in their goddamn bunkers. Jesus, you better get huddling together when this fucker blows. Uh, okay, many versions of this story. New Jersey woman claims her Dunkin' Donuts sandwich was crawling with bugs. And uh, in, in, anyway, uh... What can you say? You know, if you choose to eat, uh, to buy your food at Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, oh, Jesus. And she shows she had all her, her kid had already eaten his sandwich. She bit into one and felt a maggot crawling on her lips, but that wasn't all. When she looked closer at the sandwich and found more worms, larvae, flies, and gnats on it. And so she posted these pictures, they're all over Facebook, uh, of this maggot-infested uh, sandwich. Now, of course, Dunkin' Donuts is completely denying this. Uh, so anyway, <clears throat> the Department of Health went over there when she reported them and they, the, the Department of Health found nothing. So who knows? <clears throat> of course, the Dunkin' Donuts implying that she's lying out of her ass is what they're lying, is what they're saying. Who the hell knows? Uh, but we are going to uh, wind up in the shithole state of Florida. Uh, from this little town called Bartow, Florida. And if you want to see a shithole town, be Bartow, Florida. And this is not from The Onion. Uh, this is from Time Magazine and Associated Press. Two middle school girls arrested for plotting to kill classmates and drink their blood. Two middle school girls in Florida brought knives to school in a foiled plot 
to kill classmates, cut them up, and drink their blood before killing themselves, uh, police said Wednesday. The two girls, aged 11 and 12, were armed with knives Tuesday at Bartow Middle School. They now face charges of conspiracy to commit first-degree murder and possession of weapons at school, among other charges, hasn't been decided whether they will be charged as adults. Um, the girls planned to stake out a school bathroom and wait for smaller students to enter. They planned to cut their victims' throats, cut up their bodies, eat the flesh, and drink their victims' blood, <coughs> authorities said. The students then planned to fatally stab themselves. <coughs> the plan was to kill as many as 25 students in, <coughs> in hopes it would make them worse sinners, ensuring that after they committed suicide, they would go to hell so they could be with Satan. And these are the 11 and 12 year old girls we are leaving uh, this planet to as we're all talking about how uncivil we're becoming towards each other. We have 11 year olds stalking middle school bathrooms to eat the flesh and drink the blood of smaller students. And we wonder why we are so fucked on this shithole planet. But anyway, I cannot believe it. I am seeing uh, blue sky showing up in Garfield, Texas. Unbelievable. So I hope it dries out my my mud splattered garden out here. It looks like the garden came through the uh, came through the latest assault. Uh, it's it's too muddy to work out there today, but. We'll be out in the garden tomorrow because it looks like a gorgeous weekend in store. And I might have three dates. I have three lunch dates from Pile of Fish, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, Hambone Little Tail will be meeting uh, three women, not from the Doomosphere, so... Sam Mitchell can explain to these ladies what exactly a performance artist really is and why it pays less than $25,000 a year, which of course is the lowest income level on Pile of Fish. So I will give you the Hambone Love Life Roundup uh, on Monday. Wish me luck. Bye, guys. But did you turn your back on the camera again, little dog? You say, Papa, I'm in the sunshine. Would you ready to the rants? Are you ready to go get your squirrely or what?